Tis beyond his reach. That's the door to the guest room where Edgar is staying. As painful as this is for everyone, Graham cannot imagine what the poor young man must be going through. Seeing his bride's spirit snapped right from his arms just before the kiss that would have sealed their lives together forever. It's something that Graham would not wish to anyone, much less his daughter's husband-to-be. There was a time when the guards of the castle were human. Graham learned that this statue was raised in the name of one of Saladin's ancestors, the first dog to become guard for the castle of the crown. He performed so well that Kasima's ancestors started recruiting more dogs for the job until it became a tradition. Kasima's parents, Alaria and Kalafim, Graham unfortunately did not have the chance to meet with them on this occasion. The queen was called away to visit a close childhood friend who had recently become very ill and could not attend the wedding. Kasima expressed her mother's profound apologies and invited the Daventry family to visit another time when Alaria would not be away and so beset with worry. What a lovely portrait of Alexander and Cosima. The painter must have been extra kind with Alexander because there are no signs of the slight unease that usually haunts his eyes. Instead, he looks as happy and as handsome as ever. Graham wishes his son were so carefree more often. That door leads down into the basement. Graham can think of nothing worth investigating in the castle basement. The throne room lies beyond these large doors. They were kept closed during the celebration as some renovations planned by Alexander and Cosima have not yet been completed. The place is still messy from the renovations. It's not safe to go in there, especially without a hard hat. The impressive and large suit of armor gives an imposing presence of guarding the hallway. White benches, some standing and some lying on their sides, are spattered with mud from the last of the fleeing guests and the sudden rain. It's the cloak that that dark creature left behind when it vanished. Though not sure what good it will do to have just the cloak of the stranger in his hands, Graham takes the garment into his possession. Edgar's father, King Oberon of Etheria, looks both saddened and angry. He is no doubt worried for his daughter-in-law as well as for his son. Queen Titania stays silently at her husband's side. Noticing Graham, she looks at him with sorrow in her violet eyes, then casts them toward the ground again, restraining a heavy sigh. Greetings, your highnesses. Good day, Graham. I cannot tell you how sorry Oberon and I are for all that is happening. You are most kind, my dear queen. I hope there is something that can be done to break this enchantment on my poor children. So do we. 
It's hard to believe that this started out as such a wonderful day to end in such tragedy. It is truly unspeakable. We haven't felt this much anguish since Edgar was kidnapped from our own garden. But you still have your children, and there must be a way to save them. We can only hope. Do you think Edgar will recover from this all right? It's hard to say. I've, I've noticed that his fairy soul is still fragile, but he may yet surprise us. He will recover only when his bride does. They were both so happy these days. Rosella kept telling me these stories about how she loved your homeland so much. It was wonderful to see her and Edgar there together. And so happy. I'd give anything to undo what's happened to my little girl. It must have been lovely being able to raise your own child. And Rosella is such an eager girl. All the time she spent with us, she was always inquiring about everything in sight. Etheria, Eldritch, Edgar. That's Rosella. Just yesterday I had to tell her to stop and go take a walk. She wouldn't talk about anything else but how she never found any reference to Edgar as a child in your lands. How young was he when Lelote took him? Uh, uh, well, he, um... Not long after Edgar disappeared, I commanded the lands to forget about him and never pronounce his name again, so that Titania could move on with her life and not live with the ghost of the son we never knew. I agree. Valenice had difficult times when Alexander was stolen as an infant. Now, she has to face that horror again. You are all she has now. I wish it could be otherwise, but she'll have to manage without me while I find a way out of this. Do you know who that stranger might have been? I have no idea. But Edgar saw him just before he worked his magic on your daughter. I already asked him. He couldn't tell. I tried to, but all he could do was grieve over Rosella. Don't you two want to come inside? This weather is terrible to be standing in. Oh, that's all right. I'd much prefer to stay outside. This garden reminds me of the beauty of my homeland, and I feel at peace with nothing but the sky above me. Yes, all fairies do. Even with the weather as bad as this, we do our best thinking out of doors. It helps calm our spirits. It is Titania's wish. I understand. I'd better be leaving. The sooner I find a way to help my children, the better. Be careful, Graham. Yes, be careful. That door leads to the kitchen. The exquisite dishes prepared for the wedding feast have probably all gone to waste now, and the kitchen itself has gone silent for the day. <laughs>